configuring a RAID file on Windows Server 2012 R2 computer. RAID file consists of three or more volumes, each located on a separate physical disk. As with RAID 0, RAID file also used disk striping, whereby block of data are divided into stripes, with each stripe written to a different disk. RAID file, however, differs quite considerably from RAID 0. Under RAID 5, not only are the data stripes written, but also parity information relating to the data as well. The key to RAID 5 fault tolerance is the fact that the parity information for a particular data stripe is always written to a different drive from the drive containing the corresponding data stripe. This means that if a disk fails, the corresponding parity information stored on another disk can be used for error detection and data correction. This process also referred to as a regeneration. A Windows Server 2012 R2 software RAID 5 configuration may be set up using the disk management snapping. So let's coming back to our Windows Server 2012 R2 system and let's open the disk management snapping. To do that, right click on start button and select disk management. As previously mentioned, RAID 5 implementation required a minimum of 3 disk drives. For the purpose of this tutorial, I have a Windows Server 2012 R2 computer containing 4 disk drives. In this scenario, disk 0 is the system disk and disk 1, disk 2, disk 3 are available for use in the RAID 5 configuration. Before proceeding, the disk will need to be initialized using either the MBR or GPT partition style. And also make sure you have a dynamic disk type as well. So as you can see, our disk 1, disk 2 and disk 3 has a dynamic disk type. So let's select unallocated space of our disk 1 and right click on it and select new red 5 volume. Click on next on welcome to the new red 5 volume wizard. On this screen, we can see a list of disk drives available for inclusion in the disk array together with a list of selected disks. Currently, only the current disk is included in the selected list. Two more disks must be added to the selected disk before the RAID 5 array can be built. So let's select our disk 2 and let's click on add. Let's again select disk 3 and then click on add. Now this is the total volume size in a megabyte and that is this. Here we can specify the maximum available space for particular disk is this. And here we can specify the custom size to our new RAID 5 volume. On this screen, let's click on next. So remember we didn't include our disk 0 in our RAID 5 array. Now on this screen we have to specify the drive later to be assigned to our new RAID 5 volume and the by default first available drive letter will be assigned to our new RAID 5 volume and if you want to mount this new RAID 5 volume into any empty NTFS folder you can select the second options. Let's click on next. Now here you have to select the file system to format new RAID 5 volume and the by default file system selected is NTFS. Now here you can specify a volume label if you wish. Now let's select perform a quick format and if you want to enable file and folder level compression, you can select this checkbox as well. Let's click on next. Now view the information display on this screen and then click on finish to initiate the RAID 5 creation process. During this process, the disk management graphical view will list the disk as formatting and then you will see resyncing. The amount of time this phase will take depends on the size of the volume. Once the process is complete, the status will change to healthy and RAID 5 volume is ready for use. So now process is complete and the status is changed to healthy. Now our RAID 5 volume is ready for use. So in this way, we can set up software RAID 5 in Windows Server 2012 R2 by using disk management snapping. That's it for this video demonstration. Thanks for watching this video.